All right, I'm going to go ahead, I think, and get started. What do you think, Michelle? Go ahead and get it rolling. And first of all, I want to thank everybody who uh, was here last week and maybe heard me mention the survey that we did. I got wonderful response and thank you so much for everybody who participated and helped me out with answering. We talked about an um, upcoming membership program that I'm putting together and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So stay tuned for those details in my newsletter and um, I'll keep you updated on social media too. And um, beyond that today, we're going to look at a fun little stocking project. Um, this is a super simple little pattern that you can make last minute. You can you make with by machine or by hand. So that's always a bonus. And it would even be fun a project to do with maybe a younger family member that wanted to learn to sew or had an interest in sewing. So to start out, I'm going to share that um, ornament that I showcased and what I had done. Here's the little ornament. We'll see how that looks. Does it look super bright, Michelle, or how does it, or how are we looking on the, okay, a little bit of a delay. You might be able to see it better if I put it back here, but all we have, super simple um, stocking pattern shape, thread hanger, lace around the um, cuff, and then, um, you know, my favorite mother of pearl buttons that are embellished on a little uh, like placket of lace there. So this is the project and um, I'm learning which way to do things here with this live. Um, this is the printable. Again, testing how all this looks for you guys. So this printable is on the files tab in the Facebook group. So on the left, you'll see um, a files tab where you can go to and you can easily just find this file um, and print it. So how does that sound? Super easy. Everyone out there keep telling me that you're on and you're here. It helps me know that, that we're flowing and things are going well. So anybody else who's joined on, please, say hello. Um, so here we have the project. Now this, this particular, and we're going to do the stocking first, and then I'm going to switch over to show you this happy Santa or the happy Christmas with the smiling Santa graphic that I've shared too on social media. So um, that'll be kind of in the second half of the program today. So super simple. going to show you some steps and show you some variations on this. Um, this particular stocking is made out of uh, just a cream wool. And I don't know if you've ever been at a flea market and sometimes you'll come upon a, a beautiful white wool blanket that maybe I've even found them with when they're stamped with like navy maybe or, um, you know, they were, you can find them. And when you do, they, they make a wonderful um, fabric for making all kinds of things, particularly um, they're nice because they're that felted wool, um, a little thicker, but you could just use wool felt for this. Um, National Non-Wovens is a company that makes a really nice um, white wool that you can again wash and dry and it felts up. It's a little thicker, 100% um, wool. It's great for to be dyed too, if you like to do, you know, you dye different things um or different fabrics so um but i thought hey what if you don't have will what would be accessible um that you maybe already had in your stash and i came up with the idea why not try to make this out of batting and um so you can see here this is this is a version and i don't know how how are we doing on seeing the because it's so white michelle can you see from before yet, or you're still, we're still a little delayed. Um, but this you can see is batting. And with the batting, instead of one layer, I actually doubled the layer of batting um, for both the front and the back. So there you can see how I doubled it. 
And then I just wanted to do this by hand. So I went ahead and went with the blanket stitch to, to, to get this started and go around, um, you know, the, the heel and the toe of the little stocking. And then my idea was just, why don't I just fold back the cuff? So when I did cut out, I'll show you the pattern. When I did, um, show you two of the patterns. Um, so it's a template style. You're going to need to add your seam allowance. So this gives you a clean line to um, sew if you sew by machine, or you can add, um, you know, a, a seam allowance, cut it out, and then give yourself like a quarter inch. If you want to add a little cuff, go ahead and add, you know, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter to the top of your pattern to get enough for the cuff. Um, now on the original, we didn't have the cuff. We just added lace as an overlay. So I got this started, but I was lucky enough. And then I came up with the idea. I love ball fringe. And my friend Kelly gave, came over and gave me some of her uh, vintage textile treasures and some wonderful ephemera that I'll share with you guys eventually. But she had some ball fringe, a box of ball fringe for me. And so I here's the cream ball fringe that she so graciously shared with me. Um, and that I thought was a perfect little addition to this cuff. And also you'll see um, what I ended, we ended up doing actually my mom helped and she finished this version for me. And thanks mom. Uh, we went ahead and, um, she just did the blanket stitch around the edge that is showing. And then we just, um, you know, whip stitched the little cuff edges closed that you see here. So you can imagine just stitching those closed by hand. So super simple. Um, and there you have it kind of a little more, um, modern version of our stocking. And here he this is a fun little um, embroidery floss uh, twisted cord. So if you've ever seen the different methods for twisting cord to make um, where it, the thread actually twists back on itself, we found some interesting YouTube um, videos where you actually use your hand mixer to cause the thread to wind and then um, spring back on itself to make this really finished professional looking little cord. So we might have to do a little demonstration of that for one of these live events we do in the future. I don't have my mixer down here right now <laughs> or electricity to get it going for you guys. So we're going to save that for another Facebook live down the road. How about that? So this is a fun little stocking. And Michelle, can I ask you, I thought I had one more sample to show that was over on the table, possibly where I had these and picked them up right there to your left. Um, I had one more little stocking that had some uh, blue embroidery floss and um, rickrack on it. Okay, well. Okay, Michelle's going to look for that. And if we don't find it, I'll post a picture later in the group so you guys can see it. And um, it's actually, a, it was a gift and it was an ornament that w instead of made in batting, it was linen. And, um, and my friend Nancy made it for me. She makes beautiful Christmas ornaments. And she added a, like a turquoise blue or aqua blue rickrack edge with um, a embroidered snowflake on it that um, in this matching thread. So just another idea for you of what you can do with this super simple, fun stocking pattern. Okay. Um, and when it comes to the blanket stitch, I um, was doing a little research and found that I had a, um, oh, you know what? I think I found it. I think I found it, Michelle. I have. Uh, have I found it? Okay. No, I did not find it. 
I am really having a rough time, but um, I'm telling you guys, it's it's going to be fun when you see it. Okay, so back to the blanket stitch. And ooh, there we lost a little, we went a, a little um, fuzzy in and out. Okay, and I'm looking for to see if we have any more comments. Oh, yeah, we've, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm learning how to do this. And I just see all the comments. Let's see, there's Sharon, Betsy, um, Nancy from North Dakota. Oh, and look at Sherry's telling me that she loved my mom's store up in Valley Junction. Okay, guys, then when I take my my uh, glasses off, I got a haircut. Can you tell from the last time I was on? Um, okay, I'm really happy to be here. Okay, so we're going to move on. And I'm going to tell you about the blanket stitch. <laughs> Michelle is laughing back there at me. I'm glad we can laugh at ourselves in these live events because... I think that's 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 a requirement. Um, so this is, if you guys are familiar, you know my Finnish Notions book was based on the Women's Institute content, and this is one of their leaflets that was part of the correspondence course. So these would arrive in the mail, and then um, the members or the students would go through these booklets and um, learn all sorts of wonderful techniques. Well. This um, is Essential Stitches and Seams, and I'm going to open up and show you where they actually describe the blanket stitch um, and go through a very uh, nice illustration where they're doing um, a variety. When they're doing the blanket stitch, they're doing a variety of depths, I'll call it, of the blanket stitch. So. It's wonderful to find these instructions and sometimes really unique ideas that, you know, obviously worked back then and can be a lot of fun to add to your creativity today. So I'm going to be sharing more of those techniques and tips when I find them in this vintage material. And that's part of why I call what we're doing Vintage Made Modern. There's just rich history we have to, to learn from and build upon. So speaking of history, how about Santa? So I don't know how many of you were at visiting and um, seeing me on last week's live event where I talked about some of my vintage Santas in my collection. If you missed that episode, I will let you know that you can watch it back in the group. And I also am trying to load these Facebook Lives to my YouTube channel, which is Amy Berkman. Um, you just search that on YouTube. And because I know some people who may, maybe you have friends who aren't on Facebook that you think would enjoy participating and joining um, in these lives. Um, if they can't do that, at least they could go to YouTube and watch the recording. And I'm trying to send those out in the newsletter to you guys. So just FYI on that. Um, all right, and then I'm going to talk about the other project that um, was for today, which was the Smiling Santa Happy Christmas postcard. And um, I don't have the, I did not grab the original of that postcard to show you that at this moment, but I do, if you remember, like last week, I showed you some of these fun postcards and shared you know, the, the backs, um, all of these are at, were actually um, sent. So on amyberrickman.com, we have some free images that you can um, buy and make, you know, use as printables. I also like to give free content too to get you inspired and um, let you try making with these images. So what I've done this week is I put this graphic of the Santa, you can see the different sizes, and you'll find that on um, in the files, again, in the member group. Now, I did also load this to the amyberrickman.com website. And so if you have a friend that you think might enjoy this image, you could share that information with them, and I'll post that too. So these will be available um, either way to you members of the group and um we have several sizes so i'm going to show you a couple of fun ideas of how you can use these 
when it comes to um, where these are on the site, if you go into how to on the Amy Berkman site, you'll see, under how to, you'll see uh, um, free printables. So that is where your, if you want to send friends over. I also posted some new in images in the library under the retro tag. Um, and one of those I'm going to show you. So this one is one that's for purchase, but it's a fun um, Santa that actually has an area where you could like, you know, write a note, a gift enclosure, um, a greeting. You could, if you were doing, I know not many of us are having any kind of parties this year, but next year, if you had a Christmas party, this would be a fun graphic to use as your invitation, possibly. But we're going to talk about the happy Santa. Um, I just noticed under his beard, it seemed like he had a really good smile on his face. And um, so here's the couple things that we did with him. The first thing um, was we printed and um, made some gift bags. And um, I'm going to show you both two sizes so you can see the different sizes that you have on that printable. And, you know, we just added ribbon with some bells. Of course, you know, me and Mother of Pearl Buttons, uh, they're my favorite. So what we did here is we didn't stitch through the bag. In fact, I have one here to show you. We just stitched the button and then glued it on. Super simple. This is a larger button. But I thought that made a cute, um, cute, just for a brown bag. Trying my, one of my goals in what I'm, the things that I'm providing you as inspiration and projects is that things are accessible. Maybe you already have them in your home and you don't have to go um, hunting for, you know, supplies, materials, just like the stocking, the batting for the stocking is something that everybody might have at home. Um, now, tissue, this is what I thought was a really fun idea I want to share. If you're low on traditional tissue, how about some pattern tissue? Um, using that as your stuffing, particularly for your friends who may sew, it can be just the perfect way to upcycle or recycle a material that you might have some extra around that you can work with. And um, of course, this version, we, we went with a really pretty, found in my um, bag of Christmas wrap, a real pretty, kind of vintage looking evergreen type print. So these are both examples of paper, um, using paper as our printable. Um, so if you're out there, how about if you like the project, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. And there's Mary. Hi, Mary. Thanks for watching. Okay, Mary's got a comment here I'm gonna read. Uh, stitching would be too cute to use to hold a small gift like a great seam ripper or a sewing tool or use as a gift tag. The stocking. Yes, I love that idea for, I also thought, you know, that little stocking, you could just put a little cash inside. Um, these might be perfect for a gift card. If you're, if you're looking for a gift bag for a gift card, I think the Santa's awful fun. Okay, so how else have we used that image? We printed, I think I mentioned, we were gonna print it on fabric. So um, I don't know how many of you have tried printing on fabric. If you have, post in the comments and let me know your thoughts on printing on fabric and if you'd like me to do more with that and um, share more about project ideas for, um, for fabric. What I'm gonna show you is, um, this is the project, so this is the, Santa project, another Santa project we created, and it has, um, you can see, I don't know if you can see this, it's a postcard, it's an actual postcard that could be mailed, and Chandler, who helps me with um, projects and who's extremely talented with gorgeous handwork, she actually even was, um, worked in on Broadway creating amazing costumes, um, she helped me and came over and did a little bit of embroidery on this. And it's hard for me to tell how much you can see, but I'm going to just move it around. And you can see she just added a few French knots um, down here. And I will also show you what we did on the back. She, we went ahead and we have this as a graphic that you can buy off the website. 
Um, so I'm going to show you that. And it's, I know, under uh, collage. And if you that category, you can find this postcard. And I think maybe we ha also have it under, do you know, Michelle, if this is under retro, this postcard image? You mind checking? Thank you. There it is. Okay, cool. So here you can see where we printed it on paper. But then here we printed it on fabric. And I am going to scroll back through you guys' comments. Because we're a little delayed, um, I'm going to do that at the end maybe and catch up on, on things you're asking. And if I can't do it at the, or I miss you at the end, I'll try to go back um, and wa and um, answer those after the fact. And if, you, if for people who maybe are watching this um, as a recording, um, if you hashtag replay when you um, put in a comment, I'll catch those comments later and make sure I um, come back and try to answer them. So uh, again, making a fabric postcard. And Diane Stanley is another one of um, a great, wonderful creatives in Kansas City that I work with. And she does amazing um, embroidery on some gorgeous vintage images with florals so um and makes postcards so we may end up doing you know a whole live event on fabric postcards if that's something you guys are interested in so i did want to show you because people do have questions about um how to finish this so um what you want to do is layer your um fabric with your stabilizer and then you trim um the layers so that you have a perfect edge and then you're going to do a tight zigzag all the way around um, and i definitely recommend experimenting first before you jump in um, on your actual printed image of the postcard but again just a little starter information to get you excited about maybe making postcards which i think in today's world where we're all at home receiving those special greetings um, or cards in the mail is especially meaningful this year. So um, keep that in mind. And I did think I thought I'd show you exactly how this fabric works. So this image is harder to see just because it's, there we go. Um, so here's the image. And then the, on this particular printable fabric, it has a clear backing. You can see that shininess. So you just, you know, put it in your printer so the right side is the fabric side and then you would you can um i'm just going to peel it here on of course i should have started it before i tried to do this for you two hours later i actually get the so here's what happens you print it and then you're just peeling peeling off the fabric it's like magic um so I think this is the this particular fabric has a nice, um, really nice finished tight weave, and I believe this uh, manufacturer on this one is Electric Quilt. But there are many manufacturers out there that make printable uh, fabric, different canvas, um, cotton. So again, there's lots to learn when it comes to printing images on fabric, and we'll keep sharing more of those um, ideas for you of what you can do. And particularly adding the embroidery is fun. Okay, so I'm going to look for through a few comments. I want to make sure, well, I'll show you this too. So this is where, this was the Santa image. You can see where we cut out the version that I showed you, that postcard. Um, and again, one last look at the postcard image. Printed to fabric, the back postcard graphic. Let me give you a little close-up. Better, oh, do I have it upside down? I do. There's, I don't know if that focuses well, but you can see what a pretty graphic that is. So over at amyberkman.com, we have a lot of gorgeous images, um, many of them related to sewing, um, quilting, labels, um, button cards, a lot of creativity for those. Um, okay, I'm going to take a quick look at the comments, and I, Sherry says the adopt, love the stocking and the lace on the stocking. Um, oh, fun. And Sherry's also shrunk the vintage clip art and made necklace pendants. I love making jewelry with some of these images. Um, it's 
there's so many different things you can do. Um, pendants, pins. Um, Betsy, I, relax. We love you. You just seem like a good friend. Thank you. Because <laughs> this is an experience to do these lives. And I'm learning as I go. And like I said, luckily, I have nice people that are watching and, and patient with me when I can't find things that I thought I had in my um, baskets for the, the show. And um, I've got Michelle here helping me. So I appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys' support and, and following along and your patience. Um, and there, Dawn, hello from Danville, Washington. Awesome. It's just so wonderful that we, we get to spend time together, um, you know, with people all around the country and the world that may have similar interests and vintage notions and this love for creativity. So I really do appreciate everybody joining me and keeping in touch. Um, if you're not on my newsletter list, please subscribe. I am continuing to preview what I'm going to be doing in the live events on the newsletter. I'm also going to do some live events on my page um, coming up. So keep that in mind in the next few weeks and also over on Instagram. So if you haven't ch checked out my Instagram feed, it's Amy Berkman Studio. I'd love for you to um, keep in touch over there too. And um, we're going to not, I won't, uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to go live in the next couple weeks. We've got a lot going on um, with the holidays. And I um, also, we're working on that membership program I uh, mentioned to you. And the target to launch it is in January. I will detail more information on specific dates soon as we're figuring out our schedule. So um, please tell your friends to join the group too. I think this is a fun way if you have a friend maybe that lives across the country that you guys could um, meet up on this platform while we're learning and sharing and, um, you know, enjoying each other's passion for sewing and and vintage. Um, so keep that in mind. And Dawn said she loved my book too. I appreciate that, Dawn. So there it is, Vintage Notions. I'll give it a shout out since somebody brought it up. So if you guys need something for your Christmas list um, or you just want to treat yourself, now's the time, right? Um, wrap it up and put it under the tree. And then I will tell you that I last week I shared with you this, our, my Vintage Notions monthly series. And I do have that now, like this particular um, issue, you can find um, in the PDF book section of amyberkman.com. So you can buy the download off the amyberkman.com site, or you can go to Amazon if you want a printed copy shipped to your home. So um, again, this is me being able to share more of the wonderful, um, timeless, less you know, lessons, wisdom, stories um, from Mary Brooks Pickin and the Correspondence School. So remember the booklet that I showed you at the beginning of today's episode, um, that was part of the school and the Women's Institute that's the heart of the Vintage Notions material. So, all right, I will, um, Michelle, is there anything else you can think of that I need to talk about or tell anybody? Um, Again, I'll just quickly tell you where to find things. So in the files on the group, I added both this morning, both the, the happy Christmas image and the stocking pattern. And remember when you um, print this, be sure to make sure your printer's set at print to 100%. Um, so there you have it. And those are both in the, the files of our group. So that's one of the fun things about the group. I can share more in the group more easily. And there's Marge saying, thanks so much. Thank you, Marge, for being here and um, listening along. And um, the buttons on the ribbon are such a nice touch. Thanks, Betsy. We had the bells on the ribbon. I wonder if you met the bells on the ribbon, but buttons would be fun too. Um, and we remember we embellished the other bag with the buttons. So, um, 
so doable. That's what Sharon said. You know, that's one thing I want to try to um, make this about too, is really accessible projects for you guys that um, are easy to find the materials and easy to make. Um, we're going to have hand and machine. So there's just a whole lot of fun we're going to have uh, creating and sharing this rich history of handmade. So I will think I'm, I think I've got it all wrapped up. I'm looking around, looking at my notes. Um, I just, if I'm not back or I don't see you again uh, before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Uh, enjoy your family and put a little creativity in your day. It's always fun. This, like I said, this little stocking project would be a perfect project to create with um, members of your family over the holidays. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you do too, if you make something, I'd love for you to share it in the group. That was one thing I wanted to make sure I, I got in. So please share what you make or any ideas you have that you think would help other members of the group, because I really want it to be uh, a place where we can learn from each other and share our joy of creativity. All right, Michelle, let's sign off. What do you think? My moral support over there. Thanks, Michelle. Bye, everybody. Take care. Merry Christmas. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. The star, the 21st. Be sure to be looking for the um, star. And a quick side note, Fabriflare stars. Can't believe I almost forgot this. Um, so I just wanted to, to give you a reminder. This is an indigo junction pattern that I thought, well, if there's any time to share the star, it's this week when we have this 800 year celestial event of the two planets aligning just like way back you know the the star that the king the christmas star. the christmas star thank you michelle <laughs> that the wise men followed to bethlehem so i thought i'd share a couple versions of stars so this is one that just robin mcintosh made this and i love the buttons and the beads she added and the shimmer on this fabric um, and then I'm going to turn it around and this is the tree topper, uh, and ornament. Um, but you can see just look at that gorgeous, gorgeous rhinestone button. Um, so there you go. Didn't want you to miss out and think about the star. So take care. And again, Merry Christmas. So long. <laughs>